being an atheist is punishable by death in 13 countries, all of them Islamic. The, the gap between the activism that exists and the need and the amount of oppression, the discrimination, the torture, the killing and the murder, the gap makes this the civil rights movement of our time that is being ignored. There is no other group of people that are being so consistently silenced and oppressed while having the least rea global reaction to it. This is the fact that not even atheists are responding to this crisis is shameful and this is something that we're going to look back on. This is something that religious people could point to and say like, look, this is why you need religion. Because religious people look after each other, right? Look, when they come after Muslims, we all shout, we all make a noise. But where are the atheists? Look, they, they don't do anything. And when we try to do something, when we try to get together and make a difference, people are like, oh, you're turning like a religion. Other atheists come and say like, oh, you're turning into a religion. As if getting to get, they're just, atheists are giving the monopoly over act activism and community that, to, to religious people. You don't even have to be an atheist to be here. You could be a Muslim, you could be a Christian, and you could think like, you could think that it's not fair for atheists to be treated like this. You could be an atheist rights activist without being an atheist. We speak for Muslims when they are oppressed in China or in India. Where are the Muslims here? Where are the Christians? We speak for Christians when they are being oppressed in Egypt. Where are the Christians here? This is, we want, this is the, our first attempt at this, but we want this to grow. We want to keep I, every, we want to be the voice that makes the loudest noise every time some a blasphemer is being targeted for their blasphemy. Because right now there is no response. When Malaysia came out and said that we are going to hunt down atheists, the global response to that was nothing compared to what would have happened if they had said we need to hunt down the Muslims, we need to hunt down the Christians, or we need to hunt down the Jews. Think about the global reactions to that. We need to be that voice that is not there. We need to make these protests bigger, and then we need to learn how to get journalists covering this every time we do this. And then when, when, when it is covered, we need to then go to politicians and be like, look, we're protesting, it's being covered, what the fuck are you doing about it? What is the United Kingdom doing about it? Why are they supporting a terrorist regime? Well, we're at the Free Sohail protest uh, out in front of the Iranian embassy. Basically, we're trying to demonstrate that uh, the obvious response that an Islamic Republic takes, apparently, to a simple Facebook post criticizing ideas that they uphold is brutality, is torture, and there's way too much complacency among people who have the rights and have the ability to stand up and actually fight against that. So I want to basically be here to say, get off your ass, actually do something about this. Why do you think a lot of atheists don't do much other than make a Facebook post or some memes and stuff when it comes to fighting religion? But when they go after, when they go after atheists, when they're being hunted down, they don't, they don't get, get off their ass and show up to some, something like this. I think some of this is fear. I mean, I, I hear people say, oh, I don't want to be kind of misconstrued. Like, I don't want people to think that I'm dog whistling or I don't want people to think I'm Islamophobic or, or something like that. And what you're dealing with, standing up for the rights of people, that if they speak their mind, they're in physical danger. Right. They're in the danger of being tortured. You're not. And what do you what do you say to people that this is not going to accomplish much? Like, what, who's going to Iran is not going to do anything? You know, what's the point of doing all of this? But do you, what do you think? can you do any better? Right. Well, and another thing is that we have actually shown that if you do put pressure on these governments, they do change their behavior. Right? They do change their behavior. And the thing is that the more we grow, the harder it's going to be for us to get ignored. Yeah. The louder that we are, if, if this. If next year we do something similar like this, and there's 100 people out instead of like, I don't know, uh, 15 or 20, then it's going to be covered. It's going to be journalists here. Then, it, then it's going to embarrass the country, right? Yeah. 
it's going to get put pressure because these countries, Saudi Arabia, Iran, these theocracies, they care about their image worldwide. They don't like this, right? This is gonna, we have seen them change their, their behavior. We have, we have had success even with small crowds. Imagine what we can accomplish with bigger crowds, yeah. right? Imagine if we could get politicians to speak out every time we have a protest like this. Imagine if we had the BBC here, right? Where is the BBC? Where is the BBC Persian at least? Where is BBC Persian? This is about Iran. We're right, we're right in the neighborhood. We're in London. BBC Persian has the headquarters here. And this is about Iran. I reached out to BBC Persian. Why are you guys not here? Why are you guys not here? How, more, how much more relevant can this get? You're in the same city. This is about Iran. This is your niche. This is exactly what you're supposed to be covering. We're right here and you're not. What are you? What else could you be covering right now? There's a protest in London happening about Iran. We can't even get them to show up. We need to be more. We need to. Be, here's the thing: when they go after other people, the the reaction, the noise, the the shouting of people calling out the injustice is so loud. The whole world pays attention. We are not. And this is. We can't just be like, oh, Iran. Is such a the Iranian government is such a horrible regime. Look what they're doing in Saudi Arabia. No, this is also our fault. If you knew this is happening today and you didn't come, this is also your fault. It's not just the Iranian government's fault. It's also your fault. Okay? You, you, you people that go out on Facebook and post on Twitter and Instagram are like, oh, you don't re need religion to be moral. You don't need to believe in God to be moral. Well, if you didn't come out here today, then you might you you maybe you prove their point. Maybe they were right. Maybe atheists can't be moral because Muslims seem to be taking care of each other. So what you need to do at this point, get out here, prove them all wrong. We're gonna do. If you didn't come today, because this, it wasn't just in London, this is happening in many other countries at, on the same day, and we put the announcement everywhere. Okay. If you didn't know that this is happening today. Follow us, all of us, you know, Atheist Republic, Cosmic Skeptic, Genetically Modified, um, uh, Genetically Modified Skeptic, Rationality Rules, they talk about this, okay? They're going to let you know the, where the next one is going to be. And, and come, if you can, just come, just come out. It's not that hard to do. There, there are people in activists and seculars and atheists in Bangladesh, they're risking their lives for this. And you can't even be bothered to show up, to speak, to, to be their voice for the people that don't have a voice. There are people in Saudi Arabia, atheists in Saudi Arabia, that are risking everything for freedom. And you can't risk a few hours on a weekend for freedom, for free speech. It just, the thing that strikes me is not how bad he's got it, but how good we've got it. We don't even think about the fact that we can say whatever we want and get away with it. We, like you, you were just talking to the police, and and you were basically sticking it to them, and they can't do anything. Right. Like they were saying, you know, you're not going to stand here, and you said, yes, we are, and that was the end of it. Right. right. We live in a country where you can do that kind of thing. These people live in a country where you can't even make a Facebook post right. without getting arrested and sentenced to death. That's what, what a lot of people are, I don't realize about this that I've been that I've been telling about it. Yeah, he's arrested now, but he was originally sentenced to death. Right. And that only got, gets retracted when human rights organizations get a big fuss about it. Actually, that's a very good point, because to the people that say that these kind of things don't have any effect, the, the only reason why they removed the death sentence is exactly because of stuff like this. But then he, but then now people are started ignoring him, and they started torturing him. Yeah, that's what Steve was saying earlier, yeah. yeah. And, and the, like, it's going on hum, hunger strike because of the prison conditions, and it's like, People don't even know that that's happening, right? And it's such a symbolic case. It's like, yeah, okay, there are, there are so many things happening, and, and so many people who need our help. But like, this is a symbolic case. It, it just exemplifies the problem, right? With blasphemy in Iran. Yeah, and every other theocracy. And so, what 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 more can we do than come and stand outside the embassy and practically knock on their door and say, stop this right now? Exactly. This is this need this needs to end. The problem is like. Who's going to listen? Like we need to, we need to, we need to make it louder. We need to we make need people to understand what's going on. It's like people hear about it online. They'll see a Facebook post. They'll watch this video or something, and they'll go, "Oh man, that sucks." 
Yeah. And that's it. It's like, well, if it sucks, get out of here. Then let's do something. Right. For goodness sake. Like, if you tell someone in person what's going on, right. you say, listen to this man's story, it, it, it overwhelms them with sadness and compassion. Right. Like, that should be happening to everybody who right. about it. And, and if people were here, if more people were here, and if there were reporters here, and yeah. this was getting coverage, it wouldn't just be Sahil Arabi that would benefit from this. Exactly. Because it would be the next atheist that they would think twice before they arrest. Exactly. Or they put on death row, yeah. if they would torture. Like, you're, you're saving many other people that can't come after Sahil Arabi yeah. by showing to Iran, to Saudi Arabia, to Pakistan, that there will be a reaction. Exactly. That your country will be embarrassed on an international stage. Yeah. That politicians will be forced to reconsider trade agreements with you because their voters are demanding. It. Yeah, there are people. There are people in London today and, uh, and this year and in the summertime who are, who are knocking down Parliament's door and saying, "Do something about the climate. Do something about animal suffering." Right. We should be going to the embassies of these countries, knocking down their door, and doing exactly the same thing. Exactly. And like you said. If this was a Muslim who was being persecuted, there'd be more people here, yeah. and more of them with cameras, yeah. and more of them from newspapers. Yeah. As they should. As they should, yes. exactly. Right. Like, that's a good thing that yeah. they're there doing that, but they should be here as well. Yeah. And they're just, they're just simply not. Because nobody gives a fuck about atheists, yes. including other atheists. Well, that's the thing. It's like other atheists are, I don't know, it's because atheism is, is such a passive thing for people, which it is, but like, when it comes to compassion, human compassion is not right. a passive thing. Right. And I bet you that we could even get Muslims and Christians next year to show up here to defend atheists. So, because, look, the same right that gives, the, the, the same law that gives you a right to be a Muslim gives me a right to be an atheist. The same right that gives you the right to be a Christian gives me a right to be an atheist, right. to be a Jew. And you know who knows that and who does that? So, you know the hunger strike that Sohail Arabi yeah, is yeah. having right now? is not for himself. Mm. He's protesting the conditions of other, other prisoners. People, yeah. So while his case is being reviewed, he's putting himself in more risk while in prison by protesting other prisoners' conditions. Why can't we do the same thing for him? Yeah, we're, if we're he's not doing even, that for them, what are we doing for him? We're not even going on hunger strike, we're just showing up. Yeah, it's not much. It's the minimum, it? guys, come on, you can't it's do the minimum. It's not the hardest thing to do, yeah. to, to walk to the embassy in London right. and hold a sign and take a photo. Yeah. Like when you consider what's at stake, it's like it's almost inexcusable not to if you right. so. And we have proven that it has an effect. We have proven that it has an effect. Yeah. And that's Atheist Republic, like you should be proud of it, man. You should be proud of everything you're doing. Team effort. Yeah. Hey, well, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, man. Hey, bring it in. Bring it in. Alright. Hold on.